the truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. So there's some serious talk swirling around Hollywood about certain influencers getting the boot from the biz. And now it looks like Cat Williams might be caught up in the same mess. He's out here saying he's in danger, just like other artists who've spilled Hollywood secrets and then met untimely ends. Cat's even talking about hanging up his stand-up hat because he's feeling like time's ticking, giving himself maybe two more years in the comedy game. Drama and beef seem to follow Cat like a shadow, and his latest spat with Wanda Smith is making waves. So here's the deal. Cat Williams showed up on Shannon Sharp's podcast, Club Shay Shay, and straight up went at Wanda Smith. It's got folks on the internet buzzing, digging into what's really going on with these two. Let's break it down. Wanda Smith's a big deal in Atlanta, holding it down as a radio host and comedian on V103. She's been part of the Frank and Wanda in the morning show, leaving her mark on the airwaves. And she's not just about radio, she's dipped her toes into acting too, popping up in movies like Raising Izzy and Medea's Witness Protection. But Wanda's more than just entertainment. She's all about lifting up women, founding Girls Stand Together to support ladies from all walks of life. Her dedication to empowerment shows she's about making a positive impact, both on and off the mic. Wanda Smith and Frank Ski, total power duo in the radio game, bringing the laughs and good vibes to their listeners. But here's the twist. Wanda bounced from V1003 out of the blue, and folks are scratching their heads wondering what's next for her. With Wanda's future up in the air, People are wondering if she'll bounce back to broadcasting or maybe take a different path to keep spreading that comedy and empowerment she's all about. But the lack of info's got everyone playing the guessing game, wondering where she'll land next and what she'll do. And here's where it gets juicy. There's talk that Wanda's sudden exit from V103 might have something to do with her beef with Cat Williams. He's out here saying Wanda's trying to take him down, playing dirty like some of those Hollywood big shots he's been calling out. Cat spilled the tea on Willie D Live, hot on the heels of his chat with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay. So, Cat Williams spilled the beans on his life journey, from being a smart kid to moving to Miami as a teen and then blowing up as a comedian and actor. About 50 minutes into his chat with host Willie D, they got into the juicy stuff. His infamous run-in with XV 103 radio host Wanda Smith back in 2018. How many kids <laughs> you got, Wanda? I have three boys. Excellent. Yes, I do. <laughs> Aren't boys simple? Mm-hmm. Aren't boys simple? Um, they can be. Get on out of here. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> you okay? You okay? Only I'm one of our hands right. moving while we talk. <laughs> Are you all right this morning? Are you okay this Red Grant, Atlanta Comedy. Tell Wanda <laughs> to take sure, off them make, headphones and, and that wig. Sure, and make sure. That wig and that headphones come together. And take off together. them old ass clothes you got on. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, they're old. Versace, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It she said, Versace. I want to apologize to the people at Versace Collection. This is, this is your 2019 summer but, line that but, hasn't but, come but out. You, but you had but, to open it up and but, show us but, it was Versace. I want to just No, I didn't have to open it, it up. These know. people are on radio. They can't see anything. Yeah, but you opened it up so we could see it. Yes, we ma'am. See it. Well, happy, happy, happy. And happy, happy whatever stories for the Black Lane Bryant. That's right. That's right. Very oh, proud. Okay, let's Very play some proud. music. Williams defended himself saying he never disrespected her and stayed cool the whole time. He called the whole situation a trap, like trying to catch something big, but ending up with a whole different beast on your hands. He compared it to setting a trap for a turtle and ending up with a rhino stumbling into it, totally unexpected. I remember on the radio, you went on the radio interview, if I'm not mistaken, that's in Atlanta. Right. And you came on there with seemingly good intentions, and she attacked you. It wasn't just that part. It was the fact that before I go in there, she has a conversation about, okay, now, I just want to talk to you because you just won an Emmy for the city of Atlanta, and this is in Atlanta, and they just want to hear about the Emmy and hear from you and to thank you for what you did putting the city on. Right. Okay. And we won't talk about your kids. We won't talk about jail, no cases. We ain't going to talk about none of that. Right. And immediately gets in there and goes the opposite way. You can't flip up on me because you're an inferior comedian. All right, so Cat Williams kept spilling the tea on what went down before that V1003 interview. Apparently, there was some shady stuff happening behind the scenes. He said a lady convinced him to do this last-minute interview, 
even though he wasn't feeling it and wasn't prepared. She promised it'd be all about celebrating his Emmy win for the city and swore she wouldn't bring up touchy subjects like his kids or legal troubles. But when Kat walked in, the interviewer didn't even mention his Emmy win. Kat felt let down, but he made it clear he didn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings. He understood the lady was in a tough spot, but he wasn't gonna let her slide for acting like she knew what she was doing. The drama really kicked off during the interview with Red Grant, another comedian. Kat was already throwing shade at some other comedians, and then he took aim at Tiffany Haddish, questioning her comedic chops despite her big role in Girls Trip. Things got tense when Kat called out Wanda's interview style, and then she made the mistake of poking fun at his hair. That's when things went from zero to 100 real quick, and the rest is viral history. So after that heated exchange, Cat Williams didn't back down. He clapped back, saying his hair's natural, not permed, and dared Wanda to run her fingers through it. The insults kept flying, with Cat throwing shade about Wanda's wig and old clothes. He even opened his jacket to flex some Versace gear, though he couldn't resist roasting Wanda's bling game. Things got real tense, real quick, with Cat throwing weight jokes at Wanda and shutting down her jabs about his size and past. But the drama didn't stop there. The day after the interview, it was like something out of a TV show. Wanda's hubby allegedly chased Kat into a Home Depot with reports flying about guns being drawn. Uh, I guess the husband of the radio host pulled out a gun on him. Yes. Which honestly didn't completely surprise me because I've heard stories of Cat Williams pulling out guns on people himself. Mm -hmm. You know, like stories that haven't even hit the media. It's <laughs> so many levels. See, in, in life, what people don't see. Wanda later spilled the tea on air saying Kat had a whole agenda to come after her during the interview. She felt attacked and thrown off her game, saying she wasn't about that back and forth banter. Kat wasn't done either. He went after Tiffany Haddish too, questioning her comedy skills, which got her firing back on Twitter. It's official, I made it. Kat talked about me and didn't have his facts right. I look forward to seeing you on Monday, Kat, when we pick up our Emmys. I just wanna shower you with real love cause you need it and I love you. However, Wanda's husband denied aiming the gun at Kat, but he admitted to chasing him down to a nearby Food Depot supermarket. He felt Kat was disrespecting his wife, so he stepped in. He saw Kat making a beeline for Wanda outside the club, just like Wanda said. He even overheard Kat saying, I told you messing with me would make you go viral, while lighting a cigarette. Wanda's husband tried to defuse the situation, telling Kat to find something else to do. But Kat didn't back down, saying he'd fight him. Things got heated, with Kat getting in his face. Wanda's husband, who'd been carrying a gun for years, admitted he sometimes forgets he's even got it. But that night, he didn't have it holstered. He wanted to make it clear that Kat started it, not him. It wasn't about what happened on air. It was about Kat targeting his wife when he showed up at the club. But hold up, Wanda's hubby set the record straight, saying he didn't pull any gun on Kat. He admitted to chasing Kat, but it was all about defending his wife's honor, not about starting trouble. Sellers, who's been married to Smith for nine years, thinks Cat Williams deliberately stirred up trouble to get attention for his tour and Netflix special. Williams told the Gwinnett County Police that Sellers aimed a gun at him, but video from the food depot showed no gun in sight. Sellers clarified he had nothing in his hand. He had already put it back in his waistband. When asked by TMZ, Williams didn't give a clear answer about the incident, instead questioning why someone would pull out a gun if not to shoot. That that did happen? Is that the first time that's ever happened? I don't know happening? what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm well, just simply saying, if somebody did pull out a gun, what would you do that for? Um, I'm saying if it's it not to shoot power, somebody, please. what is it? I'm not, I'm maybe to put on some kind of show, they trying to scare you, I suppose. I don't know. Do you scare easy? Yes. We're really happy for you that regardless if nothing happened with the gun that you want to Emmy. What gun? At the gun apparently that did Sir, not materialize. I assure you if there was a gun, then there would have been charges and police and jail and all type of things, right? So that's yeah, it. yeah. So there, so there could be no gun, right? Oh yes, there very much could be no gun. There could be no gun. Okay. Yeah, you, you have a lot of stories in the news right now. I was just wondering, like, what do you think about the timing of that? surrounding your your emmy satan's good at times he admitted he gets scared easily the fallout was so bad that wanda got axed from the show making it clear she held a grudge against williams diddy has been in a lot of trouble lately if you think about it 
he's always been in the middle of drama, but now it's like the floodgates have opened and we're getting hit with all the messy details. He used to be this big shot in the music world, but now it's like everyone's seeing a different side of him and it's not pretty. Maybe he thought he could get away with it forever, but now it's all catching up to him and it's causing chaos in his world. From his early days in hip hop, Diddy's been making waves. He started off as a producer and artist, building up Bad Boy Entertainment, the label behind stars like the notorious Big. But since Biggie's death, Diddy's been shady, someone you gotta watch out for. He's fighting tooth and nail to clear his name, but insiders say he's been mistreating women for ages, even back in the Bad Boy days. Kirk Burroughs, who co-founded Bad Boy with Diddy, called him out for it, but Diddy's keeping quiet, probably cause those folks are on his payroll. Diddy's been a heavyweight in the black music scene since the 90s, making hits and building up a roster of stars like Machine Gun Kelly and Janelle Monae. But what really got him power wasn't just the music, it was his business smarts. He's been hustling since forever, launching his own fashion line, Sean John, back in 98. Then he hit it big promoting Kirok Vodka and starting Revolt TV. But for all his success, there's been serious drama too, like the AIDS fundraiser chaos and assault charges. Former Bad Boy associates have come forward with their own stories of violence, including assault accusations against women. Kirk Burroughs even supported Cassie and the other accusers, calling her a hero. So, Lil Rod, who worked on Diddy's latest album, is stirring up a storm with this lawsuit against Diddy, and he's bringing out all the big guns, photos, recordings, the whole shebang. This lawsuit's hitting Diddy where it hurts, claiming he's not just messing with Lil Rod but threatening him too, all to the tune of a cool $30 million. Lil Rod's pulling no punches, naming Diddy's son, some music bigwigs, and even recording studios in his accusations, painting this picture of a mob-like scheme in the entertainment world. Now, Lil Rod isn't new to the music scene. He worked on Diddy's The Love Album Off The Grid back in 2023. But according to him, things got real sketchy real quick after he signed on. He's talking about living with Diddy, bouncing between his homes all over the place. But here's where it gets wild. Lil Rod saying Diddy wasn't just his boss. He was this creepy mentor figure, making inappropriate moves and even trying to set him up with other producers. And when Lil Rod spoke up, Diddy's crew shrugged it off like it was no biggie. But hold up, there's more. Lil Rod's claiming Diddy tried to hook him up with other producers, promising him fame and fortune if he played along. And get this, he's saying Diddy's got some shady footage of who knows what going down at his crib, possibly caught on hidden cameras. And that's not even the half of it. Lil Rod's alleging some serious stuff, like being forced into things by someone close to young Miami and even facing assault from Cuba Gooding Jr. And he's got the receipts, screenshots and recordings showing all this chaos going down. With all this evidence, it looks like this legal battle's just getting started and it could spell big trouble for everyone involved. Then there's this studio incident that kicked it all off. Lil Rod saying he was there when things went down and he's got screenshots and blood-stained clothes to back it up. He's pointing fingers at Diddy, his son, and even their staff, painting this whole picture of a messed up situation. And now, Diddy's facing even more heat with Lil Rod's lawsuit, more assault allegations, and stepping down from Revolt TV. It's like he's gone from music mogul to public enemy number one in no time flat. And now, there's talk that Meek Mill might be getting mixed up in Diddy's mess too. There's pics of them hanging out, and people are speculating about what they're up to. Meek's trying to shut down the rumors, but the fact that he's responding to them online only makes things look worse. Diddy has been in the spotlight lately, and he and Cat Williams obviously crossed paths. Diddy is a menace in the game, and there was a time when the two of them met. Williams spilled the beans on some shady stuff he claims Hollywood bigwigs do. In a chat with Vlad TV, he talked about feeling uncomfortable at a party at Diddy's mansion. The weird part? There were no women, just men. Feeling uneasy, Cat tried to bounce, but Diddy kept pushing, dropping hints and even offering a dodgy drink. Williams sent something off and turned down the drink, making it crystal clear he wasn't interested in Diddy's advances. He straight up told Diddy, I'm not what you think I am, and I'm not gonna sleep with you. No ifs, ands, or buts. But instead of taking the hint, Diddy got defensive, trying to scare Williams by threatening his career. Williams wasn't having it though, he stood his ground, unbothered, and eventually found his way out of the party, 
leaving the awkward encounter behind. Sharing this story wasn't about stirring drama, it was about shedding light on the shady side of showbiz. Williams stressed the importance of setting boundaries and respecting consent, no matter who's involved. I respect everyone's right to love who they want, he said, but I also respect my right to say no, thank you. In the end, Williams drove home the point that no amount of money or fame should ever trump the need for consent. His story is a reminder that everyone deserves to feel comfortable and respected, regardless of their status. And despite any fallout he may have faced, Williams's popularity only soared after his no-holds-barred appearance on Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast. With his candid insights, he solidified himself as a major player in the comedy game, shaking up the industry with his bold commentary. Even the preacher T.D. Jakes hit a rough patch when unverified TikTok accounts started spreading rumors about him attending shady parties hosted by Diddy. And his personal life got dragged into the spotlight too, with questions about whether he feared getting blackballed in Hollywood. But Cat Williams didn't beat around the bush. He straight up said, what do you mean again? These people aren't powerful. Satan can't create anything. Talking about Diddy and T.D. Jakes, he pointed out that all these folks with sketchy behavior are facing challenges in 2024. It's a reckoning for everyone, whether you're Diddy, T.D. Jakes, or anyone else. Lies are getting exposed, plain and simple. Now both T.D. Jakes and Diddy are pretty influential figures. Some folks have raised eyebrows over Diddy's big donation to T.D. Jakes' church back in 2014. People wonder if it was a way to cozy up to the preacher, or maybe score some tax breaks. And with Diddy's reputation for not treating artists right, there's speculation about whether that donation helped him keep control over Cat Williams, sparking debates about money and power in showbiz. Whether T.D. Jakes decides to speak up and clear the air about these claims is still up in the air, adding more mystery to the whole story. And talking about tough times, Oprah Winfrey's been open about her struggles too. According to Cat, both Oprah and Tyler Perry have a hand in messing with his career. T.D. Jakes played a big role in helping Oprah through a rough patch, sharing a sermon called Save the Scraps. Oprah even tweeted about how much it helped her when she was feeling low. The sermon's all about waiting for the right moment for big blessings and getting yourself ready to handle them when they come your way. Jakes is big on structure and order, saying you gotta have your ducks in a row to handle the good stuff when it rolls in. Oprah's been a big fan of Jakes for a while. Before her TV drama Greenleaf came out, she made sure to get his blessing, assuring him it wasn't based on him or his church. Now some folks think Oprah and Diddy might have messed with Cat, while he's been pretty blunt about his feelings for Diddy and his wild parties. And while Cat's got beef with Diddy, he's got a different take on Kanye West's struggles. He thinks we're being too quick to judge the guy and should cut him some slack. What do you think about Kanye rant? What's going on with Kanye? From a distance, obviously, I don't know how well you know Kanye. I don't know if you've been around Kanye, but from a distance, what 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 do you suspect's going on? I suspect that we're pretty awful people if we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable like everybody else? Kat's been dropping truth bombs left and right, from turning down millions to party with Diddy to some seriously shady encounters with Harvey Weinstein. And he's not holding back on his thoughts about other celebs like Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey either. It's a wild ride when Cat Williams starts talking. As the drama surrounding Diddy unfolds, it's clear that the music mogul's once shining reputation is taking a serious hit. With lawsuits flying left and right, accusations of misconduct and assault, and even connections to shady dealings, Diddy's empire seems to be crumbling before our eyes. But amidst all this chaos, there's another figure who's been stirring the pot, Cat Williams. With his candid commentary and bold revelations about fellow celebrities, Williams has been making waves in the entertainment world. However, as he continues to expose the dirty secrets of the rich and famous, one can't help but wonder if he's playing a dangerous game. Sure, Williams' outspoken nature has earned him attention and fame, but at what cost? If he keeps digging into the skeletons in Hollywood's closet, he might just find himself facing the same backlash that Diddy is currently enduring. After all, no one likes a snitch, especially in Tinseltown. So, 
as Williams continues to walk the fine line between truth teller and troublemaker. Only time will tell if he'll taste the bitter end of his own fame. Will he be hailed as a hero for shining a light on the industry's dark underbelly? Or will he be cast aside as just another casualty of Hollywood's unforgiving nature? Only time will tell.